flow. Welcome to the Mount Sinai Midweek Discipleship Bible Study Period. We are so happy that you have decided to spend these few moments hearing what we have to share with you. We are the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church, Port Arthur, Texas, where Randy G. Vaughn is pastor. I have with me today ministers who are deacons and trustees of our church. We have Brother Garfield Charles, who serves in the capacity of deacon and, and trustee, and Brother Mike Mason, who also serves as deacon and trustee here at the Mount Sinai Baptist Church. We have at this period, at this time, we have been studying and sharing from the book of Acts. The book of Acts of the Holy Spirit. I like to say the Acts of the, of the uh, Holy Spirit through the apostles. But uh, we, we started Acts first chapter and we've made our way all the way down to we're in the ninth chapter now. In fact, our, our uh, lesson today will be from Acts the ninth chapter from 19th through the 31st verse. That's Acts ninth chapter, 19 through 31. As I said, we've been uh, making our way through the entire book of Acts. Well, not the entire yet, but up to this point. But for the last couple of weeks, or the last three weeks actually, we've been studying and discussing a one Saul, Saul of Tarsus, uh, who we know later on <clears throat> became the Apostle Paul. But, but uh, in his beginning, as we were introduced to him, he is Saul of Tarsus. We start. Uh, we were first introduced to Saul right at the uh, right at the end of chapter seven, when they simply said he uh, was present at the stoning of, of Deacon Stephen, and that. Uh, and then in chapter eight, it went on to say that he was not only present at the stoning of Stephen, but that he he was a, he was in approval. That he, yeah. That he yeah. That he approved of. Uh, of it. And then in chapter 8, it went on to say that the, the church was being heavily persecuted and that, and that uh, Saul was one of the main ones, that he, yeah. that he wreaked havoc, he wreaked havoc on the church. And they, and they scattered, and they went, the church went many directions. And, and many of them went to uh, Damascus, Damascus. It must have been quite a few in Damascus because it seemed that, that Saul had Damascus on his mind. Because <laughs> he went to, uh, yeah, because he went to he went to the chief priest and he asked them for, for special written authority to go to Damascus, arrest anybody that he found what they call uh, they call Christian. They said they were in the way. That was the name yeah. of them. In, in the way, and they were gonna. He had permission. Authority to arrest any any Christians that he found in Damascus and bring them back bound or arrest them. That's right, put them in prison. Men and women, he had authority to arrest them. Of course, uh, on, on his way to Damascus, we know something happened. Yeah, <laughs> something happened. Yeah, it, uh, it said the light, bright light shone from from heaven. And he fell, he fell to the ground. And, and Jesus says, uh, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And Saul says, well, who are you? <laughs> who are you, Lord? Lord. Yeah, he, he did. So he knew. He, he knew. You know, he was a Last week, we brought that, that very point out. That he said, Lord, and the capital is L. Right. So he knew. He knew right at that point who he was talking to. He said, who, who, uh, he said, who, 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 who are you, Lord? He said, I'm Jesus Christ to you persecuted. Yeah. And, and uh, it's hard to kick against the prick. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that. The men are born with that. A prick is something he used to got oxen with. Right. Oh, poke him in with the prick and go this way and that way. Every now and then, the oxen would kick against him. 
would rebel against the prick. Mm -hmm. but, but the more he rebelled, the more it hurt him. <laughs> the more it hurt him. So uh, basically, Jesus is telling, is telling Saul, you know, it's, uh, uh, actually, you ain't going to win this one. <laughs> right, right. Basically, basically, yeah, that's right. So anyway, anyway, um, it was with further uh, instruction. God, uh, God told uh, Saul that he would carry on into Tarsus. I mean, into uh, into Damascus, yeah. and that he would be met by man named Ananias. Of course, we know that Saul. He went to three days of fasting, but he did not eat. He couldn't couldn't eat and, and drink anything. And, uh, and he he wound up uh, going to Ananias, where, and Ananias had already been told by God yeah. that that uh, he was to uh, to go to to the house of one named uh, 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 Judas, and that's where that's where uh, Saul was residing at the time. That he would lay his hands on him, and that he would receive his sight. And, and uh, he did as he was told. And Ananias found Saul at at Judas's house. He laid his hands on him, and it's like what? He said, like scales, Scale. like scales. Scale. 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 And he was, and he received, he received his sight, and he was baptized at that time. And from that moment, from that moment, Saul began ministry. He became almost preaching immediately. And that's where our lesson began. Y'all got something for me? Yeah. Help yourself. Well, apparently, well, according, I don't know if according, but Saul must have been internalizing some of the preaching that was going on, or the teaching, because in the Bible it says he immediately began to preach as soon as the scales came out of his eyes and he was introduced to a new, new way of life. Right. So I'm wondering and I'm thinking, and I'm just only assuming what the Bible said. It says at once, this is verse 20, it says at once he began to preach in the synagogue. So <clears throat> is it possible that those that he was persecuting, while he was persecuting them, that Saul was also internalizing what was being said? But we, we, we know, we all know that God controls everything. Yeah. They have just been prepping Saul for this moment so you, from uh, from before during his travels. You wonder where his knowledge came from. Then. It took for him to preach immediately. It says I know he at said, once he began to preach. He didn't, have, he didn't go do any training. Yeah. No. And, uh, and he was uh, persecuting. But I, certainly he had to sit at the synagogues and hear them and, and point them out. That's one, that's one, that's one. So during the teaching and during the, his uh, observation, was he internalizing God's word? Because it, it would seem that he's not qualified to preach, but he just got, yeah. But 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 it, but it, it says it all that he only preached what he knew, yeah. which was Christ. <laughs> That's what that Christ is. A, the Bible here says he he preached that Christ is, is alive. Right. He preached that that he had risen from the dead, and, and, and that's that's what he knew. I don't know how long his son was, but, but in, in the previous lessons it says that he was uh, filled with the Holy Spirit. So that changes all of us. That means that all we are yeah. filled with the Holy Spirit, we become we we are in tune with God's word. And even 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 as a preacher, when you study, and there's so much you can study, but then that then that's the rest God gives to you. Especially on the moment, at the time. So you can study and study and study, but usually it, you, you want to you want to really uh, put out what 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 what, what God has laid on your heart. And study is good too, but uh, so it could it could very well be that that uh, well we know that 
he, he, he preached what was laid in him right. by God. It was the Holy Spirit. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. So even as a brand new, even as a brand new convert, he was he was uh, he was able and, and qualified. Uh, new brand new converts are qualified to speak a word for the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Because they know they know what they've been through, and they they know what what. what but but I believe that he he knew Saul knew scripture because he was a Pharisee, and so they had to study the scripture. Well, they understood that. Not that he was he wasn't practicing it. He was he was in an opposition to those folks that he was hunting. Yeah, he was a, yeah, he was the adversary. I mean, right. A lot of people right. study the adversary in order to find out, you know. Right, right. But but uh so so he, I'm sure he was familiar with he was familiar with the way with Christianity. Right. Now, I don't right. know I don't know how familiar he was with, with all of the, the doctrines and I don't know how many doctrines there was in the church was pretty new. Yeah. But he yeah. he uh so I don't, uh, but he he he, he uh Found it, he found it uh, necessary to, uh, to immediately start proclaiming the word. Not just necessary, he was, he was, <laughs> he was driven. Yeah, he, was, he was driven. He was driven. Yeah. And, 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 uh, we can only figure that the, the Holy Spirit revealed to him what he had to, what he was to say. Because he was full of spirit right? when he was baptized. So. That same zeal that he used to hunt down these Christians was the same zeal that he used to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, he had the, he had yeah. the zeal. He had, he he had the zeal. And even with the zeal, people that heard him were still <laughs> astonished. Is this the same? That's right. They were astonished at his delivery, at his teaching, but then they still had the doubt. Is he coming after us? Well, how would you feel? Is, well, I would feel the same way. I would, yeah, I would be skeptical. Somebody's um, been great here. Somebody's been trying to destroy you. He's been on destroying you, and now, and now, and now he is uh, supposed to be. And so a lot of them, a lot of them did doubt him. They, they did doubt him. He was the same person. Physically. That's what I'm saying. He was recognizable. Right. He was recognizable, but but uh, but he but he's different. Same as Allison Bird. Yeah. That's right. Same as Allison Bird. Our, our appearance is the same. Many traits of our personality is the same. Yeah. But there's something else in us that make us make us different once we are converted. They, they doubted his sincerity. Yeah, they did. They when you guys said, did anybody doubt your sincerity? Yeah. And yours? Yeah. I doubted yours myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you the truth. Me and Coffee kind of ran together. We didn't run together, but we knew each other. Yeah. And we into some of the same stuff. Now he got saved. And I yeah. watched him in church one day. I used to go just to, so, so my, my daddy could not get off my back about going to church. And he got us up there and I said, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> is that Garfield? So I know I've done this. I said, is that Garfield Charles? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so so I know, I know he. You know that, that uh, people doubt. They will doubt that you are uh, you, you convert, and people will doubt. And they'll bring it back to your memory Ooh. too. Well, and that's exactly what happened here. Yeah. yeah. So they knew that that's the guy that's been tormenting us. Exactly. And they had discussion about it, and like we had discussed earlier, that's just the way of, way we operate. You know, when we first became saved. Our people, friends, neighbors, family, wonder, is this an act? Is yeah. he really serious? Yeah, is he serious? Yeah, is, is he serious? serious? And, and the people that were judging, just like Saul judged them, as being anti or against whatever, they began judging him mm-hmm. with his new conversion. Right. You know, um, the Saul, the Saul of I, I was reading, and, and people they, they were discussing, and I and I know it passed across my mind and yours too. Was Saul a criminal? They asked, did he? They asked, some people were asking, did Saul ever kill anybody? 
Yeah, I'm cute. Wow, well, well, he was—he's uh, certainly approved of him. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 I was—I was reading different, different uh, commentators, and some of them would tell you in a minute, no, Saul ain't never killed nobody. The Bible ain't saying he killed, and the Bible never says Saul actually killed anybody. So, he, so they they gonna protect him. You know how we protect yeah. our heroes, right. <laughs> and they were animated about Saul. Oh, they ain't never killed nobody. The Bible never said he actually did. Some said Saul wasted the church, so he had to kill. Him. He yeah. probably did kill somebody. That's what that's what that's different points from different commentators and uh, and and then and then some said what difference does it make? They say he converted. <laughs> and once he was converted, what he yeah. was don't even matter. It, right. it don't matter because he was converted. Saul said he he said himself he wasted the church. Some took that some took that as that as, as though he had killed somebody, but but he was no criminal because he was within the confines of the, of, of the law. He was doing what he thought was God's will. Well, and then they gave him written permission. That, that's what I'm saying. He, yeah. and he he made sure when he went to Damascus. That he got in Jerusalem, he can just arrest him in and out of their house and pull him out. But in Damascus, in this other territory, oh, okay. he had to get permission to go yeah. in, in this other territory to arrest people. And so he got special written permission to, to, to go do this. And you know what? But it was in the confines of the law. Yeah. It was in the confines of the law. Some of those people that he met in, that saw him in Damascus, that couldn't believe that he had been converted. Yeah. He had probably rounded up some of their relatives <laughs> and, brought, <laughs> and brought them back to get. They yeah. was, they was, they were so fearful of him. He yeah, they, they, they were afraid of this man. Yeah, they right. were afraid of this man. Yeah, yeah. Right. Afraid of this man. Right, and then our lesson, the part that we're talking about today, yeah, they were afraid of him, and because they were making plots and plans to kill yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. Well, how would you for his, for his teaching and preaching? Because um, he was shaking up the world, he was shaking up the, uh, the, the status quo. Yeah. They were in trouble. But not only, not only, not only that. Not because he had become, he had become one of the enemies. He had changed yeah. sides. Yeah. But 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 he was considered by them a turncoat now. Right. So they were really mad at him because yeah. he, he he was one of us, and now yeah. and now he's one of them. And we know how we know how powerful he is. <laughs> <laughs> we know he, he's convinced, he's convinced. And so they, they really wanted him because they knew he was dangerous. In verse 22 it says, Yet Paul grew more and more powerful yeah. and baffled the Jews living in Damascus mm -hmm. by proving that Jesus is the Christ. the Christ. So exactly what you said, he, he stepped he's, across the line. He stepped he across the line. He didn't come back. And now he was the... He was the he was the he was the law persecuting the persecuting the criminal. Now, <laughs> now he's the criminal. <laughs> now he's the criminal. Because <laughs> the law is after yeah, and the law is after him now because he didn't he didn't switch sides. And I know they they say he's a turncoat because he was he was one of us. Oh yeah, you're mad with him. And, and now he's with them. Well, Christians have been persecuted even to today. Spreading the word, and they're saying that they don't know what they're talking about. They don't this and that. So the persecution has continued, but we still have believers being brought in every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. Every day. That's been happening in many parts of the world. Pastor Bond, uh, he, he, uh, he shared that with us all the time. That uh, if you look all of uh, Christianity is the most persecuted religion in the world now. In the, in the whole planet, per, uh, Christianity is the most persecuted religion. In many, many places, you can be killed very quickly and very easily for, 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 uh, for, for proclaiming for proclaiming Christ. Now they got he got it. He he escaped and they tried to kill him. Oh yeah. How, how, yeah. how did he know? How did he know they tried to kill him? Well, it says that he got word that he found out, so he must still have some buddies. Yeah. On the other side. I, wonder, said, I wonder about how he, how he found out they were trying to say it. Let's say it. Hey, man, you got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 I wonder it's, about that. It says that when Saul learned of their plan yep. in verse 24, day and night they kept close watch. They were watching Joker coming yeah. in and out of uh, the, the, yeah. the yeah. area. Yeah. But he still must have had somebody that he the other side that, 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 that told him something. Somebody, somebody, somebody said something. Somebody, or maybe he knew him so well. Maybe he knew him 
social way, you know they're going to be asking. Yeah. <laughs> they just said they're they going to be asking. He, he, he used to be one of them, so he knew how they asked. That's what I'm saying. They're going to be asking me. They're going to be asking me. And they said he, uh, he said when you come to Jerusalem, they said you join himself to the disciples. He joined himself to the disciples. They did not. They want no part of him. They didn't want any part of him. They didn't want any part of him. They didn't want any part of him. And the word that got me there, they said, they were all afraid of him. They were afraid. They were, they were scared of him. They, were scared they of him. did not believe that he was a disciple. But, but thank God that <laughs> even when we came in, I can remember when I first came back into the church, there was this deacon that took me under his wing and just kind of helped grow me and guide me through there. And here it says that Barnabas I persecuted the church. I didn't just 
rejected church, that I persecuted Christians. So for God to be graceful to me, <laughs> that's, why has, that's why he has such a testimony as as yeah. you know, because he, right. Right. He, he knew what he knew what he had done and what he had come from. Yeah. 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 He he continued preaching. Yeah, he did. Yeah, bold. He was bold. And, yeah, and they continued plotting to kill him. Yeah. So what they do in verse thirty? You send him off. So they send him home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they, they send him home. <laughs> they send him to Tarsus. Yeah. Yeah. They, they, sent, they, sent, they sent Saul home. They said he was creating a lot of issues. For him. <laughs> so they, they moved him around. But it said that after he left, things seemed to mellow out. Yeah, yeah the, 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 the so church found some peace. They right. found some, they said the church found their rest. Yeah, so they did. Because, um, I, know. I can only imagine that even though he changed, there's still people not certain about yeah. him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's an oh. authenticity. The Bible, the Bible explains all of them in detail, but right. have to be with stick. Right. <laughs> so some things, because you know, you know there's still some people. Oh, yeah. Still, yeah. And there was still some afraid of them, still not. You don't, you don't just win everybody. Oh, no, no, no. And we lived happily ever after that storybook. <laughs> there's yeah. always there's always contention. And that's always much of contention. But but overall, overall, you see, uh, this man this man saw that getting ready to do great great ministry. Yeah. Great ministry for God. And, and verse thirty one really really speaks volumes. It, it says the last couple of verses it was strengthened up by the church. Yeah, the church. And encouraged by the Holy Spirit to grow in numbers. Church is growing, and living in the fear of the Lord. So verse 31 really sums it out. Even though we go through trials and tribulations, the church is still growing. And you know what? The same church still growing today. Still growing today. Yeah. Being edified. I'm glad that we're part of it. Yeah. That's right. And God's grace is just as heavy on us as it was on Saul. That's right. Because we're not innocent. No, <laughs> we we were not. We are not. We didn't come in innocent. We came home. It's God's grace that saved all. Yeah. And we, and we thank you. And we, and we thank you for joining in with us. And we thank you, brothers, for sharing with us. Father God, we come at this time. We we are thankful. For all we see and hear. We thank you for the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Father, we just want to do everything we can to please you. And we, and we look up. Your most holy man. We look up to heaven for you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We worship you, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. This has been a presentation by the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church Online Ministry. We are located at 501 West Thomas Boulevard in Port Arthur, Texas. If you are in need of prayer, please call 409-982-6464, extension 102. If you are searching to know more about Christ, please contact us via our website and one of our ministers will be in contact with you. If you are without a church home, we invite you to join us. Please join this ministry by going to our website at www dot mount sinai mbc dot com that's www dot m o u n t s i n a i m b c dot com also if you would like to donate to this ministry we invite you to do so donations are accepted online by mail and in person Please review options on giving on our website. Thank you for joining us. Please come again. May the grace of our Lord and Savior be with you always.